Hello everyone, so we get to do a uh, first preview of the year kind of thing. So obviously, Atlanta, I'm going to go over the 2018 stat kind of things just to give an idea of where things at least stood at the end of last year, although grain of salt at week one, you know, these things for the most part probably won't matter. But they were sixth in total offense, 389.1 a game, and fourth in passing yards with 290.8 a game. They were 20th in sacks allowed, allowing 42 of them, 27th in rushing yards, only getting 98 yards a game. And they tied 12th in yards per carry at 4.5. Fourth and third down percentage, uh, third down percentage at 45%, and 10th in points per game at 25.9. Defensively, last year, they struggled a lot. They had a lot of injuries. So and the best thing they ranked in was, uh, well, I guess tied on a 25th for both rushing yards allowed at 124.9 and points per game allowed at 26.4. But most of the numbers on the defensive side, I wouldn't take too seriously. Just because, well... They were hurt. You had guys like Deion Jones and Keanu Neal out early and for the year. And now they're not out for the year. They are healthy, and they are also very good. So I would take most of that into, you know, account with that one. So their injury report is uh, Matt Gono. Gono, hopefully I'm not bodging it. He's a tackle. Has a back injury. His He's out. Obviously, Julio Jones was on the actual injury report, but he's going to be in the game now. So, obviously, that's a pretty big get for them, just the fact that Julio's probably going to be playing, as last time I checked, they were finalizing a deal today, which means he'll be out there tomorrow. And that would heavily sway things one way or the other, as that could be basically a one or two score swing one way or the other. If he doesn't play, they could be potentially a score or two down than where they would be had they had him. So, yeah. And the tackle, I guess, could also be kind of a tricky thing just because they're kind of shuffling around that line a bit. Because if you look at their depth chart, you have both him and... uh their first round draft pick at the end of the end of the first there in Caleb McGarry, who were both listed as the starter. So not feeling too confident about that. I guess they aren't. And so going on to the Minnesota side of things, which is they were 20th in total offense, averaging 345.6 yards a game, 13th in passing yards at 252.2. And they were tied in 15th in sacks allowed, allowing 40 of them. 30th in rushing yards. We knew that was not good last year at 93.3. And tied 21st in yards per carry at 4.2. And third down percentage-wise, they were 26th at 36%. 19th in points per game at 22.5. Defensively, we know they're better there. But they were 4th in total defense, allowing 309.7 yards. 3rd in passing yards allowed at 196.2 and tied third in sacks with 50. And I would expect maybe the sack numbers to go down a little bit just because, well, Sheldon Richardson is gone and he's kind of a big interior presence in the passing game. And they were 15th in rushing yards allowed at 113.4 and tied seventh in yards per carry allowed at 4.1. And over the course of this year, this is one that I would expect to go up a little bit kind of in vice versa of the whole sacks going down because Zimmer did voice a kind of a displeasure about not being big enough up front. And I think that was mainly directed at Sheldon Richardson because they've, we've been pretty good at stopping the run in recent years. Not so much last year was a little, mm. so I think those probably go up a little bit, at least the total yardage allowed per game kind of total. And they were first and third down percentage defensively with 30% and ninth in points per game allowed at 21.3. So Minnesota's injury report is a little longer <laughs> than Atlanta's. So Mike Hughes, knee injury, he's out. I think we knew that. Stefan Diggs, hamstring, questionable. 
Conklin has a rib injury, questionable. Then you have Mackenzie Alexander, Kentrell Brothers, Everson Griffin, O'Neal, and Linval Joseph all on the injury report, but they also all fully practiced. So even though they might not quite be 100%, they're definitely good enough to go because, once again, they were all fully practicing throughout the entire week, and they will clearly play. So that's good to know. And, like, I don't think anyone really anticipated Mike Hughes playing in this game, so I don't think that's really that big of a deal. And the one big deal I think is on this list is Stefan Diggs being questionable. And I have a feeling he's probably going to play, even though he won't be at 100%. But I do think he, he will. And just kind of a... To be honest, I just have a feeling about that. I don't have any other reason why he would or would not. So, little keys to the game now. So, like I said before, that defense is healthy now, and they're quick, and they're aggressive, and they react very fast. So, you kind of want to use that against them, which means kind of establish that run game. And I would use more two and three tight end sets because, well, we have four tight ends. Even if Conklin doesn't play, you still have three tight ends to utilize. So, you can still use two and three tight end sets. And... You know, you can establish the run game with that, those outside zones and those inside zones that they should be running quite often this year. And that should only help Cousins because you do have weapons to throw out of that. Because even if Diggs isn't healthy, you can use those three tight ends. You still have Thielen, Rudolph, and Irv Smith Jr. out on the field at the same time. So play action passing is still a threat, even if you have, you know, two or three tight end sets on the field. And that's kind of where Kirk Cousins is at his best when he's doing those play action fakes. So you're just kind of using that aggressiveness to your advantage kind of deal. And I think you might be able to get them to bite a little bit. And, you know, just try to make sure you don't have those sloppy week one kind of things like I think we saw a few of those in uh you know the other night with Chicago and Green Bay so it would be nice to you know just try to avoid some of that obviously that's hard to do as week one's a little weird usually and as always Bailey make the kicks it's all we need I know that more most of it goes into special teams I'm kind of grouping it in with offensive stuff here but it would be kind of cool if that that's fine. Uh, defensively, um, I, I think they should actually send some more blitzes than they have in the past. And it's kind of an, an aggressive play here. But they have three new starters on that line, guaranteed. And they had both the left guard and the right tackle pretty much undecided with uh, Jamon Brown or James Carpenter and Gano or McGarry. So I'm thinking with three new starters, two of them being rookies on the right side, I think you should probably be sending some more blitzes just to see how it holds up, especially in that dome. It gets loud. It's been known to kind of, you know, mess with some offensive linemen before, just the noise in that stadium. So I would think a line that hasn't gelled together pretty much at all yet kind of go after them a bit obviously if they start burning you with julio jones you you stop but i think you might want to actually try doing that a little bit more this week and um against atlanta especially you want to steal that edge because they have done a thing for years that we're trying to establish now in minnesota which is that outside zone running game which kind of pretty much has been a staple of theirs for a while now and that is what gets them kind of kick-started. So seal the edge, make sure that doesn't happen, and play disciplined, like, gaps. So, and just another week one thing, try to prevent sloppy tackling. Another thing I think, I don't think we actually saw too much of that in general in the Green Bay-Chicago game, but 
it has been known to happen. And it would be kind of nice not to do that just because they do have players that can make you pay, whether that's Julio Jones, Devontae Freeman, or, you know, Calvin Ridley. You know, they, they have guys who will make you pay dearly for that. So try to do that as much as possible to avoid that. Obviously, I think that goes without question. But, and for all those concerned about Rhodes, he at least has a chance to show he's still kind of that that guy at corner against Julio Jones. I know there's a lot of people who won't like the fact that he didn't show very well in the preseason. But to me, once again, like it feels like every year we have corner issues in the preseason and then they just don't translate to the regular season. So, I mean, it is what it is. I'm not really worried about it until it translates into the regular season. But even then, if he has one bad game against Julio Jones, I wouldn't freak out too much. It's Julio Jones. <laughs> and just another thing just to watch is just how they start rotating that interior defensive line because you don't have, once again, you don't have Richardson anymore. So now you need to find a way to get interior pressure with the guys you do have. And the guys they do have are... Mata Afa, Jalen Holmes, and Jaleel Johnson pretty much with Shamar Stefan as well, probably being the early down guy. But I'm curious to see who they throw out there first when it comes into those passing situations. Like when you're talking like third and 15, third and 10, when you know they're probably going to throw the ball, those kind of things. I'm a little interested to see who the first guy out there is. And so I guess now we're down to prediction time, which... I, I do have Minnesota winning 27 to 24, but I am not confident. I I do think this will end up probably a it will end up a close game. And I think it will also end up a hard fought game, which means once again when you come to Dan Bailey and the whole kicking, it kind of needs to work well this week. And yeah, that's what I got. So let me know what you guys think down in the comments below. Until next time, I bid you all adieu.